Canadian Zach Eady is one of the game's most polarizing players. He's one of the most dominant college players in NCAA history, but people really wonder if his abilities can translate to the NBA. But if Masai Ujiri's front office thinks that they can, should the Raptors push to select the player in 2024? Let's get into it. I'm going to give you everything that you need to know about Zach Eady, starting off with his draft profile, going into then his college stats from the season with the Purdue Boilermakers, where he won his second consecutive National Player of the Year honor. We're going to talk about his strengths as a player and his weakness as a player. At the end of the video, we're going to be deciding if this is a player the Raptors should strongly consider drafting in the 2024 class. So drop a like if you enjoy this one along the way and subscribe to the channel for more Toronto Raptors content and videos just like this, as well as live streams all throughout the offseason and beyond. But Zach Eady is coming off of a wonderful season with the Purdue Boilermakers that saw them win their conference championship, but also they got all the way to the national championship game in March Madness, where ultimately they fall to the Yukon Huskies. And the Yukon Huskies were just a juggernaut in this tournament, so can't really falter Zach Eady and Purdue too much, and it was a good run all the way to get to that championship game. But even though, as I said, this is a player who has won back-to-back -back National Player of the Year awards. The conversation, which I alluded to in the intro to this video, it's, it's all polarizing. Nobody has a general sort of consensus as to where Zach Eady may end up in the draft. If you've looked at the most recent batches of mock drafts across many different platforms, you can find Zach Eady 13th overall, 14th overall in the lottery. You can find him in the middle of the first round at 17th or 18th overall, but you can find him all the way in the second round, 31st, 32nd, 36th. 38th overall. Nobody has any real idea as to exactly where Zach Eady may fall in the draft. It's all over the place, and we're going to go through the reasons why that is the case over the course of this video. But Zach Eady certainly is a player that has caught the eye of many people, and certainly it helps to be seven foot four in that endeavor. Coming off of his fourth year with Purdue, yes, seven foot four. You can assume, yes, he is a center, but a gnarly wingspan at seven foot eleven. This guy is an absolute monster, towering above his college teammates and opponents, like even a seven foot two center Klingon on UConn, who is also slated to be potentially a lottery pick in the upcoming draft. Like <laughs> still, Zach Eady was almost towering above this player on the court and that's what's led to some eyes being on him going with his offensive and defensive prowess in the college game but people again are wondering if those abilities may translate to the NBA. Well, for starters, let's look at those numbers that he displayed this season with Purdue on his way, yes, to back-to-back -back National Player of the Year honors. And with stats like this, you're bound to get a lot of recognition for some NBA scouting purposes. Over 25 points per game here, along with 12.2 rebounds, also chipped in a couple assists per game, and 2.2 blocks per game on defense. But just because you're, it's 2.2 blocks, like... If you're getting 2.2 blocks per game, it does not necessarily showcasing this statistically how many other shots you're altering just because of your presence on the inside. Defensively, he is a very talented player at the rim. Also, with these statistics, we see some very good field goal percentage at 62.3. You'd come to expect that for a player of his size. But I think what's even more impressive is the free throw percentage. Above 70% shooting for a player of Zach Eady's size, this free throw percentage has consistently gotten better and better and better over the course of his four-year college career, as has all the statistics attributed to Zach Eady. He is a workhorse who has continued to work on his game and has continued to get better to get to the point where, when declaring for the NBA draft in 2023, it looked like nobody was going to draft him at all. A year later, there's actual mock drafts like ESPN's with Gavoni, which, which is likely the most accurate mock draft, which currently has him slated to be a lottery pick, something definitely to monitor with Zach Eady. But along with this great determination and work ethic to continue to be better, let's take a look at what else he can offer in terms of the strength department here. Zach Eady, well... He's tall. <laughs> His size and strength are the biggest draw towards the player for sure. No, they are not necessarily the reason he is good, but I've said in other videos... It certainly is going to help with his abilities. Also, what's great about his size and strength is that he's a good rebounder. Like You can be tall, you can be big, and not be that great of a rebounder. Shout out Klingon, shout out Miles Turner for being in that sort of category. But Zach Eady's a good rebounder, positions himself well, and just it's like a suction cup on the rim when a shot does not go in, as you saw with those 12 rebounds per game that he did put up. But also, what's really interesting about Zach Eady's ability as a player is, yes, he's big. 
but his touch around the rim is still quite good. In the national championship game where he put up 37 points, he put on a pretty good display of his ability to move in the post and just have that nice touch for finishing. And that nice touch, I think just having an ability like that, the soft touch overall around the rim, gives him those soft hands to be able to knock down those free throws at a decent clip. Like 71% isn't terrific from a free throw percentage, but for a player of his size, definitely it's more than what you would expect it to be. And I think we can give the soft touch around the rim a bit of credit for that statistic being the way it is. Going further down the list that we have here, his post moves I just alluded to for in the game against UConn, but all throughout the season, all throughout March Madness, he was just a force to be reckoned with and com- in combination with the size and the skill set. Having those post moves in his arsenal to be able to find ways to get to the basket was a necessary skill for the player to have to help Purdue get all the way to that championship game. Going through on the defensive side of things here, when he's at the rim, yes, with the size, with his ability, his timing on shot blocking, he is a force of nature at the rim. It is so difficult to get by him in scoring on the inside, especially for players at the college level who typically are younger and always are shorter than him. And let's translate now over to some of the more intangible things associated with the player. His basketball IQ is great. And it's not something that you would typically associate with a player who picked up the game perhaps later on in his life. I think he picked it up in his freshman year of high school. So surprising to see. A player possessed this level of basketball IQ, but he's such a smart player. He uses his size terrifically. Like a lot of players have good size, they don't use it well, but he uses it so well to generate the space and get into his spots on the offensive end to get the buckets that he wants. But all over the court, the way he composes himself, the way he plays the game, the way everything evokes out of him on the floor, you can definitely see his abilities in the basketball IQ department. And finally, I've already kind of mentioned it, But he's just got that work ethic. His mentality to continue to improve and to succeed in the college game, basically willing himself into NBA draft conversations over the last year, it's a testament to how much work he has put in to fine-tune his game and get to this level. So, with all these great things associated with the player, why are there still some doubts that he could even be a first-round pick in the upcoming NBA draft. Well, there are some weaknesses associated with the player that we have to go through. And though it's not like a huge list of weaknesses here, some of these weaknesses are completely glaring and like you just might not be able to overlook them in any capacity. His speed is a problem. Like His size is almost a, as much of a strength as it is a weakness. He is not fast does not get up and down the court that well, especially for a more high-paced setting like the NBA. It was fine for college. Will it be for the NBA? I'm not so sure. His lateral quickness is probably the biggest problem for the player. In the NBA, if he is on the floor, he is going to get absolutely hunted on defense. He is going to get plastered and put into so many pick-and-roll settings. Like every offensive set, might be a pick and roll where you try to get Zach Eady switching and Zach Eady involved. Like he's just slow footed. He's got slow lateral quickness and he's just not that fast. And honestly, there's a lot of players that have ability, but if they fit into this category of a weakness, they just might not be able to cut it in the NBA. One of the more smaller weaknesses that isn't perimeter defense, lateral quickness and speed is also like I spoke about his soft touch around the rim, but he can be a little bit clunky sometimes with the ball in his hands. Like, yeah, you know, going up to the rim, soft touch, all that. But with the ball in his hands, like I said, it can be a little bit choppy sometimes. If there's a more nimble player guarding him or a smaller player guarding him, they can just swipe through and easily get the ball off of him. That leads to maybe a little bit of turnovers and with some more elite level defenders that we're going to see in the NBA for Zach Eady. That could prove to be a bit of a bigger problem. This is one of the smaller things associated with the player. As is the final weakness here, which is his draft age. Look, you look for a lot of more raw prospects when it comes to the draft, guys who have a lot of potential. This is not really going to fit into that sort of a category of a player here with a draft age of 22.1. Again, centers are late bloomers, so you have to keep that in consideration, but certainly something worth mentioning as it comes to the weaknesses. So overall, we need to make a sort of decision here. Yes, there is a lot to like about the player on the offensive end. There's certainly a lot to like about him in the rim protection department, but as far as his ability to play lengthy minutes in the NBA. I just don't see it. It's rather unfortunate here. I want to back, you know, a fellow Canadian here, Zach Eady. I want to back the player to succeed. I want every player to succeed in the NBA at the end of the day, but there are just some certain traits that are just completely necessary to the modern NBA. 
and being able to defend at the perimeter is essential. You are going to get put into so many pick and rolls. We know he is going to be a liability in those settings. It's not even a question. The question will be how much of a liability will he be in those settings. And for that reason, for me, there is a ton of concern associated with the player. That being said, there is clear ability here. He can protect the rim. How much can you hide those defensive deficiencies that so that you can get the most out of the player on the offensive end and at the rim on defense? Well, that's a bit of a different story. Lengthy NBA minutes on a day-to-day basis might be difficult, but can this player get himself in some spots? 10 minutes a game, maybe even up to 15 minutes a game in the NBA? I think that's something that could work for Zach Eady. I think that the floor for Zach Eady is very high. Like at the very least, you've got a role player specialist here where he's just got the size to trump a lot of different players in the league. And in some defensive matchups, you're just going to want that size. You're going to want that rim protection. You're going to want that rebounding. And Zach Eady can provide that. Offensively, you get those looks to the rim and his free throw percentage is not something that's going to hamper his ability to stay on the floor on offense because even if you follow him, he's still a decent free throw shooter with potential to scale that free throw percentage up as he continues to develop his game so overall for me for Zach Eady I'm definitely not drafting him in the first round absolutely not compared to like looking at where the Raptors are going to be picking here potentially a top six pick completely out of the question not going to happen middle of the first round that's where a lot of people want to look at Zach Eady for me there's talented players there there's bigger holes in the roster that need to be addressed don't look there But that Pistons second round pick, which is likely to be the 31st overall pick, if the Raptors like what they see here, like what they see in the workouts and feel as though there are things they can work on to limit the liability that he showcases defensively, I'd be okay with them selecting him in the 31st overall position. The Raptors have Pirtle, the Raptors have Kelly Olenek, but adding in Zach Eady as a third center to the team, which I've said on this channel, they do need a third center and somebody who does have size and can protect the rim and can rebound. Just for the sake of when injuries happen, if Pirtle goes down, it can't just be Kelly Olenek on the team. So having a third center like Zach Eady, who fits into this category that I'm giving of a specialist role player, I think there is reason to believe that the floor is relatively high for Zach Eady and that at the very least, he can contribute in small spots on a game-to-game basis and can affect the outcome of games positively for your team. But for people looking like lottery, people are looking at like the Heat in the middle of the first round or OKC. I just don't really see it at all. Ultimately, for the Raptors, I'd be okay selecting him second round, but this would be a little bit unlike the way Masai Jiri's front office has drafted in the past. Not a raw talent, more of a polished talent that doesn't really have a lot of upward trajectory. I can't really see it happening. I mean, I, I, I guess I could see it, but... I'd be surprised, but as I said, not a first round pick, but maybe a second round pick. What do you guys think? Would you draft Zach Eady in the first round? How high would you go for the Toronto Raptors to draft Zach Eady? Do you believe that he can scale up his abilities to play at the top level of professional basketball? Give me your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. That's all for me for today. Drop a like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more Raptors content all throughout the offseason, and check out the channel for the Raptors giveaway we currently have ongoing, which closes Sunday, April 14th. See you again next time for another video.